like melons, uh, which was a feature of the opening um, in the newly refurbished uh, Brisbane Museum uh, some four to five years ago now. now we're back again with the second of the series at Bangalow with Barry Ferrier and the key thing to start with on this one I think is the Fairlight computer again because that comes back to the technology hook uh, and your role uh, in... I was working at the time um, at the Queensland Performing Arts Centre I'd, I'd been involved in the opening um, ceremonies, I, I got a job as the music director on a large production they, they, that was uh, performed outside on, on a big grassy area at the back of the um, Performing Arts Centre, uh, which was a really big production, and uh, that was a success for me, and so the, the Performing Arts Centre started to employ me doing composition for some of their projects in the theatres, and they discovered that I could uh, use a fair like computer music instrument. <clears throat> and they'd purchased one in the uh, setup of the Performing Arts Centre. But they didn't know what they got, but they? they and it was, there were only three, I think, in Australia at that st stage. And the, the fair like computer music instrument was a huge innovation at the time. Australia um, didn't really get the recognition. The, the, the guys down in Sydney that developed the fair like changed the whole course of the music industry by uh, combining two pieces of technology which is one is called a sampler where you can record a sound and use that as a musical source and it will transpose that sound so you can, for instance the obvious example is a dog barking you've got woof and record it then you can play woof 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 so Combined with that, they had what's called a, a sequencer, which is a recording program that allows you to organize those sounds into a musical piece, which uh, is a commonplace part of techno music now, but that was the very first of those, um, the very first machine that could achieve that. And the uh, Performing Arts Center had purchased one of those machines, but pretty rare for someone to know how to operate. It was quite uh, you know, a complex machine. And I'd had experience in a recording studio hit down here, the um, Music Farm it was called, which was in those days of um, traditional 24-track recording studios, one of the leading recording studios in Australia for many years, and the guy that owned it, Ian Mason, had purchased one. And I'd, I'd got a lot of experience using it in the studio, so when they found out I could use it, I started to get a lot of work at the Performing Arts Centre demonstrating the use of and or incorporating the Fairlight CMI into live performance. And um, so when Expo came along, I put in an application to, just because I wanted to be part of this high tech event. Um, and uh, Mike Mullins saw my application and, and employed me to do the music for for this uh, Live Fantastic Parade, yeah, on this Live us, Fantastic Parade. Just tell us a little bit of history as to why you think your application more than any others grabbed his attention? Well, um, Fairlight had also um, developed uh, video technology and they had a, another machine they called the Fairlight CVI, which is the computer video instrument. And it allowed you to do uh, real-time effects on your video. So if you're feeding just as you are now, you could feed the video signal from this camera into a CVI and I could have all sorts of psychedelic effects or uh, a, a lot of it was uh, you know very at the time very innovative it used to be done in post-production but this was a live instrument and I'd done one big <coughs> excuse me a little bit of a cough here um, I'd done a big concert at the uh, concert hall called Dreams and Machines where um, I was the brief was to demonstrate the use of the Fairlight CMI and the, that's the computer mu music instrument and the Fairlight computer video instrument in live performance. And um, so I made video clips uh, showing the use of this uh, video instrument. And so I took stills out of that and I thought, how am I going to approach this? I got all of these uh, sheets of colored paper and I, 
I, I printed uh, my application on this coloured paper with these big shots of the CVI and an explanation of some of the work I'd done with the computer music instrument and that came across Mike Mullins' desk and he was looking for someone to compose the, the soundtracks who had experience in this field and I guess um, I'm, I'm hoping it was my um, uh, pretty jazzy looking um, it, uh, application that, that won the day for me but now I had to be interviewed and he heard some of my music and uh, after a um, several meetings with him I ended up getting the job which was uh, very exciting for me to be in that role uh, at that time in Brisbane when there was just so much happening it was it was when Brisbane grew up and everything was going on at that time there was just so many productions involved and this was the centerpiece so uh, event uh, I didn't really grasp the scope of, of Expo and it's uh, the amazing things that were presented there but um, I, uh, I certainly, I, I was living and breathing it during that period and um, it, it, was, uh, it was very challenging and, and there, we wanted to have a big diversity of music and styles and uh, but it was all futuristic soundtracks, even just the, the name, the Qantas Light Fantastic um, Parade had to live up to that and um, so... Um,